Well, I mean, unless you're allergic to seafood. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time, we've made the final preparations for getting the Northern Light Battery ready for us to stow away in it. We've also gotten ourselves an Eagle Egg to prepare for a little bit of cheating during the Lumberjack games, and we also basically made... Actually, actually, all we did. Anyways, tonight we are going to be heading off to do the Lumberjack games themselves right after we pick Sly real quick. We had to pick Mentley for the Lumberjack games, which, once again, Sly gets shafted out of doing a job for one of the big heists. But I want to make my way all the way back up to the top of that lighthouse. If you remember from last time, and also during the recon phase and me exploring around to get the clue bottles... There's still a treasure sitting up there for me, and it's a one that only Sly can get because, he, well, he's the only one who can climb up the lighthouse. So I'm going to cut over there, and when we get it, we're going to make our way back to the safe house, sell the treasure, possibly get Bentley's next gadget, and then we shall head off for the Lumberjack games. So see you all in just a bit. Alright, so here we are back at the top of the lighthouse for hopefully the last time. We got ourselves our treasure, so let's just snag it real quick. We only got 40 seconds this time as opposed to the plate that we got, which was 45 seconds. I'm going to get to the top of the lighthouse and just paraglide our way back over here. Hopefully not get hit by that eagle flying around or get caught by one of the guards patrolling around or crushed by logs going around. My god, this place is very dangerous. Oh well, either way. Just make our way back over to the safe house. Uh, hopefully I can get away from this guard. There we go. Not get hit by the eagle. That is such an evil placement. Let's just make our way into the safe house and just see that guard get absolutely eviscerated by that eagle back there. All right. And with that, all our treasure is now collected. Let's sell the topaz, the sapphire, because I was able to collect those awesome guards on the way to the lighthouse itself. And so, the Jade Decanter, the Collectible Plate, and the Jewel Chalice. With that, we've got 3,000 coins on us. Not a bad haul, and I know we're going to be losing a majority of it in just a second. I don't even know if we're going to have enough for the next gadget set, because I believe gadgets for the next and final area of the game go up to... I want to say two to 3,000 coins for it. Like, they really push the limit of coins uh, for gadgets in this game. Not as much as in Sly 3, because, oh my god, the coin count for gadgets in that game is ridiculous, but still. Either way, let's get Bentley out once again. Put on our reduction bomb, which is right here. And head off to the Lumberjack games. Okay, guys, let's head down there and win those talons from Jean Bissot. Sly, try to keep a low profile when we get close. We don't want him to recognize you. For the longest time, I always wondered why Bentley said that of Bassan recognizing Sly, because it was like, well, when did these two ever meet? And I was thinking, oh, maybe he saw him during the train heist or something, but no, then I remembered, oh, wait, he was watching Sly dance with Carmelita during the palace heist. So let's just head on down here. Hopefully Sly can keep a low profile as he stands sir. almost right the in front of Bassan. Lumberjacks would like to participate in your Lumberjack games. Think you got what it takes to win the clockwork talons, eh? Well, I'm sure enough gonna let you play, so long as you pay the entry fee. Much obliged, partner. We'll, uh, just take our positions for the competition. Enjoy the moment while you think you still got a chance. It's as close to winning as you'll ever get. This year's first event will be a power chopping contest. Alright, pretty easy. Just hit the X button when the reticule is over the log. I think if you miss it even once, it actually does count as you failing the test or the competition. Bad, it's actually the easiest out of all the contests. He's so happy. Okay, Bentley, you're on. Plant the eagle egg on Bassan, and the angry eagle parent should swoop in and throw off his axe timing. All right, got ourselves a time limit. Once that time runs out, then Bassan's gonna be done chopping through that log. The eagles are very angry that we're holding their egg out. You'd think that Bentley would keep it hidden until he made his way over to where Bassan is to, you know, negate the fact that we're constantly being swooped by eagles, but whatever. 
Uh, just gotta make our way over there. This is actually probably the most time uh, consuming part. You have to wait till the platforms float over here so you can go to the next one and then let it float over here, go to this one, then vice versa with the next one and so on and so on. I will say, while this isn't my one of my favorite heists because of well, what's about to come, I will say, this probably has the best heist music in all of the game. Because I really do love the Lumberjack games. Wow. Straight zeros, huh? I think you better rethink them scores, boys. What you intended to give me was perfect tens, right? So, your pink friend knows how to handle an axe. Let's see how you handle a vertical wall of ice. And rock. Don't forget the rock. I, I can see why Basan would be angry at the fact that all that work that he put into cutting that log, because that was still some pretty impressive cuts, only got him zeros. That still feels like he's cheating uh, from our cheating. So, does that technically negate our cheating then? Oh my god, Sly, please. All right, this time. You know, oh my. All right. Shock. Nope. Ooh, not fast enough, you little varmint. I mean, it's straight nines. It's still better than, well, what you probably would have gotten. Yeah, I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of the ice wall segment. Log rolling and log chopping is probably the, the best part of this heist, but at the same time, it's just... There's so many annoying things, like the, the little electrical shots that you'll get if you don't time your climbs right. And as I say that, I got a basically a perfect score the second time around. But at the same time, the worst part about this heist is what's to come right now. So yeah, gotta hook him three times with a grappling hook. The thing about Basan is he skips segments of that ice wall. In fact, the entire ice section of the ice wall, he will just, yep, outright just a completely skip. And the fact that the grappling hooks don't have a reticule, and the fact that he moves kind of jarringly, it's hard to be able to pinpoint where, where the right spot to hit him is. And I think I might have actually just failed this. Need a miracle? Need a miracle? Nope, he made it. I am king of the mountain! Let's try this again. I absolutely despise this segment. And this is why it's... Well, I know this is like a lot of other people's favorite heists in the game, just because it, it's something different. You're not actually trying to steal something, you're just trying to win it through unfair means, might I add. This segment really just does make it bad for me. As I say, n nailing them all three times in one go. I want to call him Doctor, by the way. That was a pretty it nasty fall. You have pulled the wrong cards again. Did I ever tell any of you the story about the judge from last year's competition who mistakenly gave me a score other than 10? That doesn't seem very sportsman of you, Bassan. I see we're tied with only one event to go. Unfortunately for you, I've saved my best event for the last. The spinning log competition. Okay, looks easy enough. I just need to stay out of the water. Yep, just easy enough. Just gotta read when the logs are about to dip into the water. They do that little, like, rise above, and that usually means that it's about ready to dip. I usually like the best to stay in the middle log that we can easily make it to one of the other logs the worst part about this i would say is if you accidentally find yourself overshooting or undershooting your jumps because that has happened to me multiple times before oh boy because there's been times where it's like oh i just use one jump really and i'm i didn't make it enjoy your dip in them icy canadian waters yes they were very refreshing Sure knows how to wake you up. But sometimes they'll do something like that where uh, the, the log you think is going to be the one that will keep you safe because it, it's the second one to dip, it, it's also the second one that's going to dip. 
and well, you basically screwed yourself. It's not as bad as the ice wall segment, but it, it, it's still not the best. I still say the power chopping is the best out of all of them. I'm gonna do it. What is that airtime, Bentley? Like, holy hell. I think he might have used a puff from his hover pack just to be able to get that serious airtime. Right, I think one more set of dips should be enough to finish this competition. Yep, there we go. You're one lucky turtle. I'll give you that. But now, watch how a skilled log roller does it. This is crazy. John Besson's got those judges so intimidated, there's no way he can lose. You're right, Murray. Those guys need to go. Okay, I'm just making this up on the fly, but what if I were to lure the judges one by one into that cave? Once inside, you two will knock them out and take their clothes. Ingenious! When all three judges have been restrained, we'll be able to don our disguises and take their place at the judges' table. Fly, you can use the alarm clock gadget to distract the judges and lure them into the cave. That's a great plan, Sly, but you'll have to move fast. Once John Bisson finishes the log rolling event, the gig is up. Wait, what do you mean I didn't buy the alarm clock gadget, Bentley? Bentley? All right, so actually you have to go into the menu and pick the gadgets because we do need an alarm clock for this. Uh, throw it right here. Get one of the judge's attention. Throw that there. Hide inside this barrel so he doesn't see us. And he'll make his... Oh my god, he's not actually going to go into the... This is going to be very risky. There we go. No! Oh, you, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me right now? Now, go into the cave. Bentley, that's a very impressive paper mache beak you got there. Uh, yeah, paper mache. Right. Like, I'm not the only one who finds it a little disturbing that they have the beaks of the geese guards, right? And I like that the fact that the only other form of cost of their outfit to wear as their disguise is they put the scarf and helmet on. Don't even put on the safety vest. and run you didn't get hit oh, my aching head those talons really pack a punch sly murray wake up yeah i'm awake but not so loud i have a splitting headache Whoa. Who? where are we what's going on this looks like the sawmill control room bison must have thrown us in here for interrogation later I, for one, would like to escape before he returns. It looks like we're pretty well sealed in here. Unless... Unless what? Unless you can fit through that hole. I... I think I could squeeze through there. I'll drop down and try to free you guys from the outside. If there's any trouble, I'll call with this walkie-talkie. You might be able to help me with these sawmill controls. While you guys do that, I'll try prying open that steel door. Given enough time, I might be able to make some progress. Sounds like a plan. Good luck, Bentley. And remember to shout if I can help you from up here. Bentley, you okay? I can't see you from in here, but I heard the fall. I'll be fine. Just give me a moment to catch my... Breath. 
Well now, Candy Bridges, I should have figured a puny turtle like you'd find a rat hole to squirm through. Well, I just dropped my glasses, had to come pick them up. I ain't like you, boy. I ain't stupid. When y'all were unconscious, me and my boys paid a visit to your hideout and found all them clockwork parts. Lucky thing, too. Arpeggio is willing to plunk down a king's ransom for the whole lot. I even threw in the talons. You sold all the clockwork parts? Arpeggio has them all? I wouldn't expect one of your kind to understand the finer points of commerce. You turtles are too stupid to know a woodcutter from a woodchuck. That's it. Time I showed you just how stupid we turtles really are. Sly, on my command. I hear you. Prepare yourself, Bissad. On guard. Okay, Walnut. Get ready for a smushing. Call Note to self, liberation. never insult Bentley's intelligence because he will throw hands with you. It, I'm actually surprised of how much confidence he has wanting to take on someone like Bassan. So, Bassan, it's going to be chasing you throughout this entire boss fight. You've got the controls of the sawmill up above for Sly. All you have to do is press the corresponding button and it will activate the trap. X is just for jump. Square activates fire. Circle is logs. And triangle is the saw blades. So now it's time for us to make some bison burgers. So what you need to do is you need to get a lean cut of meat. So what you need to do is lure your bison over the saw blades. Make sure that the cut is nice and lean. You want to flatten it up into a nice looking patty. And then you want to cook it up. Rinse and repeat over and over again. Make a profit. Every now and then, if he gets a little too close, he will do a charge attack into you. It's actually pretty short, so you, uh, it actually will do my damage. Uh, what am I trying to say? It won't do a whole lot of damage to you. However, the thing that will probably do more damage to you would be activating traps on you by accident because you're not paying attention. Let's get this varmint. Every now and then, after like a portion of his health is gone, he's going to call for reinforcements. That's just a way for you to get some health back, but also to be very annoying. Not as annoying as Rashawn's guards, but still. Let's drop some logs on these guys, fire it up. Thankfully, this takes care of the guards in one hit. I'm just going to play very risky here. And I actually want to activate flames a little bit more because I want to get a certain line from Benley because it's the dumbest but also best line in the game from him. That was the wrong button. I meant to hit triangle. Uh, that's not, oh, we still managed to get him. <laughs> Although I do like uh, Sly's bam there for a second. Oh boy. Come on, where is it? Where is it? Come on, say it, Bentley. I know you want to. That's not it. Come on. I want to cook those bison burgers too much, though. Fire. Yep. Dynamite, turtle. All right. After about two thirds of his health is gone, he's going to start chucking dynamite at you, and I don't think any more of his goons are going to be coming out to attack. However, uh, the hit radius of that dynamite is pretty unforgiving, so you really want to keep distance from him. Done. Come on, where is it? Say it, Bentley. Fire. Say it. Okay. That's not it, Bentley. Hook up. Why is he not? I, I guess because it is actually a pretty rare line. How's that? There it is. Just tell him to sizzle his dizzle. That, that is such a dumb line, but I love it during this fight. Alright, fine. Here, just walk a little closer. There we go. And now you're dead. <laughs> or I'm dead. Puny little turtle. I think that's the first time we actually lost to a boss fight and not having me have to go back in the video for a showcase of what, what their their victory dialogue is. Like I said, it's probably going to be more likely you're going to kill yourself with your traps than it will be to take up a song. Alright, back to where we left off. Doing a little bit better, but then again, I was mostly screwing around trying to get that one dumb piece of dialogue from Bentley. All right, one more hit should be enough to take up a song. All right, now one more hit should be enough to take up a song. So let's just give him a nice little cut, and we're done. Tarnation. 
I've been done in by some four-eyed turtle? Times have changed. Once again, brains triumph over brawn. Good job, little buddy. That was some fast thinking. Don't forget about me! You... did a great job opening that door, Murray. Thanks! Uh, attention, uh, John Desson. Arpeggio's, uh, carrier blimp will uh, arrive to pick up the Northern Light battery in exactly one minute. Okay, enough patting ourselves on the back. If we're going to get the clockwork parts back, we need to get onto that blimp. The silo battery isn't far. If we run, we can make it. Enough talk, let's move! Time to run, no time to lose. Shake a leg, that blimp's on its way. And we don't actually have a whole lot of time to get there. Although, it's still not an unforgiving amount of time, especially seeing as how you just have to make a, a straight line run to it. With a little deviation, whichever way you want to go to get across this little river. Just make the way over to the battery, and we're done. Now, while I like the fact that the game just uses different methods to get up there just to showcase it because I, I never found a, a reason why Murray throws Bentley up there when he could just, you know, jump onto the trampoline down there as well. Oh well, whatever. We're inside the battery, it's time to go get the rest of the clockwork parts back from Arpeggio. As we shut ourselves into the Northern Light battery, it became black. For a few long minutes, we just sat there in darkness. No one dared to talk for fear that John Bassan's men might discover where we were hiding. Time seemed to have stopped. And then, we felt it. We were being lifted up to Arpeggio's blimp. It was all so strange. The focus of all our schemes had been stolen from us. Our clockwork parts were gone. Looking around the inside of the battery, I knew we all felt it. Failure. I was twitchy and ready for action. Any action. Bentley tried to make some sense of the situation by drawing up meaningless plans. But Murray? Murray took it the worst. He just sat there sobbing while the team van floated away over the horizon. That van was his life. I knew I'd have to find a way to make it up to him. Don't worry, we still found the van, guys. Yeah, it's kind of a downer ending because it's just like all the progress, all the all the schemes, all the clockwork parts we will steal up to this moment have been taken from us. Next time on Sly 2 Band of Thieves, we're gonna go through Arpeggio's blimp and see if we can steal back those clockwork parts. We're almost at the end of this adventure. It's been a long time coming. And you know what? I kind of feel good about myself because I was able to make it through the entirety of the Canadian chapters without saying a boot. Damn it!